it is almost certain that some places in the solar system are not habitable, but some of them were in the past, like Venus and Mars which likely had oceans of liquid water. So there is some chance that even now some of the microscopic organisms are out there in the solar system besides Earth, somewhere, but the chances are very slim. But what if at the present moment every planet in the solar system had life on it? That's not to say that it has, but what would the most realistic situation for life to appear be? What would life be like for those alien life forms? Well, that is what I am going to check out today. Let's start with the first, smallest planet, or the planet closest to the Sun, Mercury. The surface temperature there during the day is 427 degrees Celsius, and during the night it gets as cold as minus 180 Celsius. This is because it has no atmosphere and it is also constantly getting bombarded with solar winds and radiation. In general, it is no place for any form of life. So then, how could this place possibly have any life? Well, luckily, there's lots of ice on Mercury's poles. That is because the sun never touches those places. So they are always in a shadow, meaning they never melt and the temperature is stable. Now, the only possible scenario in which life could exist in this ice is that if there was a bit of liquid water underneath the ice and there were right chemicals. Only then could life arise, but the chances are very striking. Life in those places would only likely be microscopic and very simple, likely similar to single-celled life forms, and it would be thriving in complete darkness. Now, there are some places on Earth where this is likely occurring right now, and that is in Vostok Lake in Antarctica, which is a lake buried underneath the thousand meter ice, and some organisms might be there. So Mercury could be in a similar situation. Now let's go to the second closest planet to the Sun, Venus, a cloudy hell world with the surface temperature that can melt lead, which is a metal. The temperature is 462 degrees Celsius, now, there is lots of evidence that it once had flowing water, so life could have stayed, despite the surface being like hell. But where could life possibly be on Venus? Well, the most likely place is in the upper clouds of Venus, or the upper atmosphere. To be exact, at around 50 kilometers from the surface is where the pressure is similar to Earth's, one bar. The temperatures are at around 70 Celsius, which is hot for us but it is very much survivable. And all around it is a pretty good place for life in general to stay there. Life there would just need to float there somehow, likely could be pushed by the wind on Venus and the organism there would just need to stay away from the surface. The life there would likely as well be microscopic, but it could be a bit more complex than the usual. The life there would float in the clouds of Venus for its whole life, it would be protected from harsh space and the surface. All around, it would be kinda cozy. Now let's skip the planet that is the third closest to the Sun, because that's Earth. That's all of us, right there. Now let's check out the planet that is the fourth closest to the Sun, Mars. A cold desert, but nonetheless one of the most promising objects in the solar system for life. Now as well as Venus, there is lots of evidence that it once had oceans of liquid water billions of years ago. And well, a lot of that water is now trapped into forms of ice, vapor and snow. There was even a bit of liquid water spotted on the surface, but it was very salty. This is all very promising for life, since it could be found in places where liquid water is trapped, like inside of rocks or underground, or on the poles of Mars. And water is pretty much the best solvent for life. Life as well would likely be microscopic and not too complex. It would also likely be living in complete darkness as it would be beneath the ground or inside rocks. There was also spotted an area filled with a bit of methane, which is an organic compound, increasing the chances that there is life there. Now let's go to the largest planet, Jupiter, a gas giant, and the sixth closest to the Sun. Now, how could life possibly exist in a place which does not even have solid surface and is so cold? 
Well, the secret place is just a bit inside the atmosphere of Jupiter, where the pressure is 10 times that of Earth. That's where the temperature on Jupiter is 21 Celsius, which is room temperature quite comfortably. The heat comes from Jupiter itself, as it produces heat like a dead star. So, this place, a bit inside the atmosphere, is quite good for life to stay in. So, the chances for life existing in those clouds is almost none, but if it were to exist, it would need to float just around those clouds and never go any deeper, which is quite hard to do when you are on a planet that has two and a half times stronger gravity than Earth. So the pool of objects is extreme there, but the extreme wind speeds on Jupiter may carry life around and make it never touch the deeper Jupiter, allowing it to spread. So this life form again likely is going to be microscopic, as there are no conditions for it to evolve. But the life there would be living somewhat nicely, it would be a bit dark and windy for them. Now Saturn, Uranus and Neptune are all different planets but they are all gas giants. So life forms and life is going to be very similar to the one described in Jupiter, with a few differences, so let's just skip them. And finally, dwarf planet Pluto, or just a planet, despite it being kicked out of the planet club, along with many other icy planets, now dwarf planets, it still has some interesting potential for life. Pluto has a thin nitrogen atmosphere, and has water ice mountains, suggesting there is something causing the drift underneath the surface and making those water ice mountains, and that is liquid water. The surface is likely floating on a water underneath the surface, and that water is pretty much an ocean underneath the surface. It could be there because Pluto's moon Charon is causing the tidal heating and making the water liquid. Now, this ocean underneath the surface is a pretty good place for life to start, if there are right chemicals there. So life could emerge and evolve there, it would just need to be in complete darkness. That is pretty much the whole list of slightly possible life on other planets. There are also some moons of these planets which have even more potential to hold life. All around it is important to note that every planet which I talked about likely has no life. What I am giving is reasonable reasons and options for why it has, but that still doesn't prove any life on other planets whatsoever. But it is important to know where life can emerge, and we should explore these objects a lot more, and we might even have first contact with the actual aliens.